فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد We are in the explanation of the book منهج الحق written by الشيخ العلامة عبد الرحمن ابن ناصر السعدي رحمه الله سم توكل على الرحمن حقا وثق به ليكفيك ما يغنيك حقا وترشد Place your reliance upon Ar-Rahman genuinely and trust in him so that he suffice all your needs and in order that you be guided. So the author, rahimahullah, he says, Tawakkal ala ar-Rahman haqqan. Tawakkal is an action of the heart, reliance. Tawakkal is a what? It's an action of the, it's the action of, a, of the heart. So what he's trying to say to you when he says to you tawakkal is let reliance be established in your heart in its true essence and its true meaning. And it is to what? Surrender your affairs as a slave to Allah wa ta'ala. To turn to him in request alone. Wa bihi is to actually trust him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the scholars, they say, as Ibn al-Qayyim says in his kitab, Madaruj al-Salikin, that thiqa, thiqa, he said, it is khulasati tawakkul wa lubbu. Ibn al-Qayyim said that thiqa, trusting Allah wa ta'ala, it is the summary of what tawakkul is, is. And it is the backbone of a tawakkul. It is its true essence and its true meaning. And that is why the Messenger alayhi salatu salam, he used to say in the hadith Abi Dawood narrated in his sunan, Al-Albani rahimahullah, he graded it hasan. That the Messenger sallallahu alayhi salam, al-du'a al-ma'thuri anhu, the du'a that was transmitted from us, that the Prophet used to say, which is, Allahumma rahmataka, arju, O oh Allah, your mercy I hope for. Fala takilni ila nafsi tarfata aynin. Do not let me run my own affairs even a split second. وأصلح لي شأني كله. And oh Allah, perfect all my affairs for me. لا إله إلا أنت. There is none worthy of worship except you. Then the author goes on to saying, ليكفيك ما يغنيك حقا. This is the ثمرة, the outcome. Of التوكل. Once a person relies on Allah and comes with reliance, what comes out of it is ليكفيك ما يغنيك حقا. And this is the aqibah and the outcome, which is Allah will suffice you. Allah will run your worldly affairs for you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala will make easy for you a rizq al-halal. Provision that is halal. والمال الطيب. Wealth that is good. Also, Allah Tabarak wa Taala will run your worldly, uh, your hereafter affairs for you, your religious related matters. Allah Tabarak wa Taala will give you the strength and the ability to tread on the path that pleases Him. And the author then goes on to say, "In and you will be guided." Watarshudu he means by it tanalu sabil al rashad. You're going to gain the path of guidance. So what the author here is trying to bring to our attentions is that annattawakkula that reliance yajibu an yakuna musahiban lil abdi fi umuri ad-diniyyati wa dunyawiyya What the author is trying to show and tell us is that it is obligatory on every one of us to have tawakkul reliance with us in our worldly affairs and our hereafter related affairs. 
as much as you have to rely on Allah tabarak wa ta'ala in dunya related matters you also have to re, uh, have reliance in him subhanahu wa ta'ala in religious related matters naam tasabbar an al an al isyan wasbir li hukmihi wa sabir ala at ta'ati allaka tas'adu persevere in avoiding sins tolerantly endure his decree be patiently constant in acts of obedience and you shall attain true happiness the author now rahimahullah al sheikh al allam abdur rahman nasir al saudi here at this point what he talks about and he urges each and every one of us hath ala al sabri bi anwa'ihi al thalatha he's urging us to come with patience in its three types Ibn al-Qayyim says in his kitab Iddatu al-Sabirin wa Dakhiratu al-Shakirin Iddatu al-Sabirin wa Dakhiratu al-Shakirin However you want to say it Ibn al-Qayyim says As-sabru bi'itibari muta'allaqihi thalathatu aqsam Patience in terms of what it connects to It's of three types he said Sabrun ala al-awamiri wa ta'at hatta yu'addiyaha Patience on Allah tabarak wa ta'ala's commands and his obedience until you establish them. Second is وَالصَّبْرُ عَنِ الْمَنَاهِ وَالْمُخَالَفَاتِ حَتَّى لَا يَقَعَ فِيهَا The second one is patience from the things which Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala prohibited oppositions of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala's command so you don't fall into it. And the third one he says, says is what? وَالصَّبْرُ عَلَى الْأَقْدَارِ وَالْأَقْضِيَةِ حَتَّى لَا يَسْتَخِفَّهَا And the third one is Patience upon the calamities that befall you. So the author brings those three types in his poetry. He starts with the first one, which is Tasabbar Anil Isyani. Be patient. From what? The word patience in the Arabic language originally means al habsu, is to imprison. It is to prison the nafs. Man'u nafs is to prevent your nafs, to stop it from what? Al-dhunub, the first one is. Tasabbar anil usyani means to imprison your nafs. Anil-dhunubi, sins. And, wahabsiha anil wuqu'i fi imhari millahi, wa muqarafatiha. And also, to imprison it in coming close to the prohibited things from you. And getting any way close to it or even trying to sip from it. So you require patience to have that. The sins that a person can have are two types. We all know that. It is a shubuhati or shahawat. Shahawat desires. For example, a beautiful woman of a lineage. She's from a, a highly respected background, مثلاً. and she calls on to a man and she asks for zina. And he rejects and he turns her down. But what, on what grounds does he turn her down? He turns her down because he has come with a sabru anil maasi. He is patient. He has the ability to restrain his nafs, to imprison it. In not falling into this. Because as we know, it is the nafs and shaitan together. It is shaitan and your nafs that came together that's pushing you to do to do this muharim and the sins. Allah says to us in the Quran, وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ نَفْسِي إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِسُوءٌ Your nafs commands you evil. So the person, he becomes patient in falling into sins and that which Allah has prohibited subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلِذَلِكَ الْإِمَامُ الْبُخَارِيُ narrated in his sahih that the messenger alayhi salatu wa salam he said وَمَنْ يَتَصَبَّرْهُ أَمَا وَمَنْ يَتَصَبَّرْ يُصَبِّرْهُ اللَّهُ وَمَنْ يَتَصَبَّرْ يُصَبِّرْهُ اللَّهُ Anyone who teaches himself patience, exercises patience, trains himself to come with the 
characteristics and attributes of patience. The Prophet said, يُصَبِّرْهُ فَازَ بِالْعَاقِبَةِ الْحَمِيدَةِ The person will attain patience finally. And that's what everything is. The, this, it is said, الْعِلْمُ بِالتَّعَلُّمْ وَالْحِلْمُ بِالتَّحَلُّمْ Knowledge is attained by learning. Practice makes <coughs> practice makes perfect. So when you teach yourself to be patient and you teach yourself and you train yourself, finally you will attain patience. Then the author goes into the second type of patience, which is Wasbir Lihukmihi. Be patient. Be patient upon that which Allah has. has created, has predestined for you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The calamities, the pain and the agony that you may go through and endure. That's why Allah said in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْسٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ أَلَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ Allah tells us in this ayah, We will test you and test you and test you. Bishay'in with some form of al-khawfiyah. Wal-ju'a, poverty. Wal-aqsim min al-amwal and deficiency in wealth. Wal-thamarat and deficiency in our crops, our income. Allah then says, وَبَشِّرِ sabirin Give patience, sorry, give glad tidings to the patient ones. Who are they? It is the ones who when they are afflicted with calamities, قالوا, they respond by saying, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. From Allah we came and to Allah we will return. So when the author says, Wasbir li hukmihi, here he's talking about Al Hukmu al Kawni al Qadari. The universals, the universal, creedal signs. Because sometimes the word hukum, as we know, is referred to as what? Al hukum, al kawni, al qadari. And the second time, uh, the second one, which is al hukum al shar'iyu, al diniyu. And the author, rahimahullah ta'ala, here he's not talking about what? He's not talking about al hukm al shar'iyu dini. Why? Does one not have to be patient on those two? They enter the other two. Hukm al shar'iyu dini, it enters into doing as you are told to do and staying away from things that you are prohibited from. Those two are the hukm al shar'iyu dini. As for this one, it is al hukm al kawniyu al qadari. Then the author goes into the third one, which is وَصَابِرْ عَلَى الطَّاعَاتِ وَصَابِرْ عَلَى الطَّاعَاتِ means what? Make your soul patient upon the obedience of Allah. Ya ikhwa, obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it requires patience from the slave. So he can come with it. That's what Allah said in the Quran, فَعْبُدْهُ وَاسْطَبِرْ لِعِبَادَتِهِ To worship Allah tabarak wa ta'ala and to attain through but to come with your, your act of obedience, what does it require? It requires patience, as the verse says. Also Allah says, Ya ladina amanu sbiru wa sabiru wa rabitu wa taqullah la'allakum la'allakum tuflihun. So Allah tells us, Ya ladina amanu sbiru wa sabiru wa rabitu wa taqullah la'allakum tuflihun. It was mentioned about Abdul Aziz ibn Abdullah ibn Ubaz that a man came up to him one time and he said to him, Ya Shaykh, I have given da'wah to the people and I just never see the results of my hard work and I feel like all doors are closing on me and and and, and he went, he complained. So Shaykh Abdul Aziz ibn Ubaz, as you know, he's blind, he can't see. Maybe not with his eyes, but he definitely, rahimahullah, could see with his heart. He was an imam. Shaykh Abdul Aziz ibn Abdullah ibn Ubaz, may Allah bestow his never-ending mercy onto him. He said to the uh, 
he said to the uh, the the dai he said bring your hand out I mean your palm show me your palm so he gave him his palm and Sheikh Abdul Aziz Ibn Baz said to him ya ayyuhalladhina amanu those of you who believe isbiru sabiru wa rabitu wa attaqullah and then he said la'allakum tuflihun that's when you find success successor comes after you've come with these four so he asked him did you come with these four because if you you haven't even come with the first which is ya ayyuhalladhina amanu sabiru be patient if you were, you wouldn't have complained. So, لَعَلَّكُمْ تفلحون comes with making sure that the person has come with these characteristics that are needed from them. So, we ask Allah from the bottom of our heart that He gives us the ability and the strength to come with this. And the ayah is a nida li ahli iman It's calling the two people of belief, people of faith, people who have iman. So when Ya Ayyuhal Ladina Amanu comes as Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said what? Fara'iha sam'ak Bring your ear close Listen attentively You're either going to be commanded a good Or you're going to be prevented and prohibited from something evil So you need to bring your ear, attent- ear close And listen attentively And the author look what he said as well He said Tasabbar ali al-isyani Wasbir li hukmihi Wasabir ala ta'ati What did he say after that? Allaka tas'adu you find success. You will find happiness. If Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, if Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala honors you, minna, and it's a karam, it's an honor from Allah. If He honors you to allow these three types of patience to combine in you, He honors you in that way. By allowing all three to be present in you. Sabru anil ma'asi, sabru ala aqdari Allah al mu'lima. And as sabru ala ta'ati to be patient upon the obedience of Allah. Fuzda fuzda, you have found you have become victorious. With what, my brothers? Bisa'adati Daraini, the two places that we reside in, this world and the hereafter. And that is those three. Ah huwa sabilu sa'adati wa tariquha, the path to happiness. And its means. Naam. Wa kun sa'iran bayna al-makhafati wal-raja huma ka janahi ta'irin hayna taqsidu. Traverse between fear and hope for they are like the two wings of a bird as you travel. The author says wa kun sa'iran Bain al makhafati wal raja. The author says, Be one who, tra- who flies, who moves and maneuvers between fear and hope. If you're trying to get, if you, if you want to get from one destination to another destination, there's a path in which you need to take, right? If I want to now leave London and I want to go to Birmingham. Or I want to go to Leicester. Or I want to go to Manchester. There's a road I have to take, right? So from point A to point B, I need what? I need a route to take. And by taking that route, I will reach my destination. The same applies to the one who wants to go to Allah. Who wants to reach Allah. Upon that individual is to follow this, which is, Sa'ir is the one who's moving, who's maneuvering, who's, go, who's, who's going. To Allah, what is it upon him? He has to be between what? Bain al makhafati wal raja. Fear and hope. Fear and hope. Three things are what move the heart. Shaykh al Islam Taymiyyah mentions them. He says, Wala buddha minat tambihi ala qa'ida. Tuharriku al quluba ila Allah azza wa jalla. فتعتصم فتعتصم به فتقل آفاتها فتق سوري فتقل آفاتها أو تذهب عنها بالكلية بحول الله وقوته فنقول ابن تيمية رحمه الله says it is necessary and it's obligatory to bring to your attentions something that moves the heart 
something that will save you, something that will lessen the harms that you may go through. Either it will reduce it or it will fully eradicate it with Allah's permission. And what did he say? There are three things that move you to Allah. The car moves with the oil, petrol, tires. With all those, the car doesn't can't move from one point to another. The things that the thing that makes a person move, that gives him muharrikatul qulub, for his heart to move, is and it is intended. Itself is intended. It's what? Three things. Al-mahabbatu wal khawf wal raja. He says. Hope, fear, and love. When these three are there, the individual will move to Allah. The highest of those three is love. Because love itself is intended. It's intended in this world and it's intended in the hereafter. But fear, on the other hand, it will fully go the day of judgment. It only remains in this world. Fear doesn't exist anymore in the hereafter. Because Allah said in the Quran, Allah inna awliya Allahi la khawfun alayhim wa lahum yahzanun. Verily, the allies of Allah are the ones who don't have fear and they don't have any worry and concern. So it's powerful that the person realizes what is it that can make him gain and get to Allah Taala. Then the author says, "Huma kajada hayta irin hina taqsidu." They are like two wings of a bird. Can a bird fly with one wing? Can it fly with no wings? What does it require for it to fly? It requires two wings. Fear and hope are the two wings of what? Of the bird. Hina taqsid when you're intending Allah. If you're intending Allah, and it's Allah that you want, you will not be able to fly to Him. You will not be able to get to Him if you don't have fear and hope there. Many people, one overcomes the other. They become excessively scared that they give up. And we're, pro we're prohibited from that. Allah says to us in the Quran, وَلَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ وَأَسْلِمُوا لَهُ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِي أَحَدَكُمُ الْمَوْتِ Allah tells us in this verse, وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ So Allah says, لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Don't give up on Allah's mercy. So the fear that takes you to قُنُوط, giving up, is not praiseworthy. And some people hope overcomes them. They become excessive in it. That whenever a, a mistake and a sin occurs from them, their response is, Inna Allah ghafur rahim. Allah is very merciful. Allah is forgiving. So there's nothing to be worried about. There's nothing to be concerned about. And that isn't the case because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as much as he is ghafur rahim, is also what? Shadeed al-iqab. And if you look at the Quran, Allah Taala He mentions them together. غافر الذنب وقابل التوب شديد العقاب. Allah also says, نبي عبادي أني أنا الغفور الرحيم وأن عذابي هو العذاب الأليم. So the person you see, he has to know both of them are together. هما كجلاحي طائر حين تقصد. If it's Allah that you're intending. Then what you need to know is that you need to have this. Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah also said in his Majmu' al-Fatawa, the 15th volume, he says, فَمَا حُفِذَتْ حُدُودُ اللَّهِ وَمَحَارِمُ There is no other way that Allah's boundaries and Allah Taala's prohibitions have been protected. وَوَصَلَ الْوَاصِلُونَ إِلَيْهِ And the ones who have reached Allah have reached Him except through what? بِمِثْلِ خَوْفِهِ وَرَجَائِ وَمَحَبَّتِهِ Pay attention. حُفِظَتْ حُدُودُ اللَّهِ وَبَحَارِمُ Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is what? Allah's boundaries are protected. And His prohibitions are also protected. 
And the only way it happened for it to be protected, and those who reached Allah reached Him, all of them, with these three, which is fear, hope, and love. Pay attention to this. Today, if a, people, a, paper, a person does a crime in this country today, and they do what they do, uh, the government has to do a thorough investigation to find out who was behind it. Are you, sah? No one's going to come forward and say, I murdered this person. Sah? So they take the body, autopsies, they check the body, they look into the body, the body's investigated. Huh? Sometimes the body's kept for a very long time, three weeks, four weeks, five, months. They keep the body to see if there is any chance that they can find out what? If they can find anything whatsoever to uh, to find out who did this crime, or who's behind the crime. They go to the scene again, the CCTV camera is looked at, a whole uh, effort is put to find who did it. But if you look at the time of the messenger, those who did mistakes came forward themselves. They were the ones who say, Ya Rasulullah, fa'aqim alayhi al-had, established the capital punishment onto me. There was no police he sent after them, an investigation that was done, or hatta he sallallahu alayhi wa would say to them, were you drunk? He would find qeel for them. He would try to find a way out for them. But they will persist. The woman he told her, alayhi salatu wasalam, the Ghamidi lady, he told her, alayhi salatu go and breastfeed your child for two years. For two years go. He didn't, sell a, he didn't send a army after her to make sure that when the two years is finished that she's brought back. Nothing. She brought herself again. No one came after her. No one looked for her. She kept bringing herself. After two years, she still wants that had to be done on her. The reason why this came from them, and the reason why they did that is because they had khawf, raja, and mahabba. So that's how they attained. Hududullah was protected like that. The person will knock on the door and say, I did it. There will be no lying. Ibn Taymiyyah goes on to say, فَمَتَى خَلَى الْقَلْبُ Whenever the heart is empty, من هذه الثلاث these three فسد فسادا لا يرجى صلاحه أبدا it becomes corrupt a corruption that there's no hope for any rectification ومتى ضعف فيه شيء من هذه and whenever any of these three become weak ضعف إيمانه بحسبه his iman becomes weak in accordance to that نعم وَقَلْبَكَ طَهِّرْهُ وَمِنْ كُلِّ آفَةٍ وَكُنْ أَبَدًا عَنْ عَيْبِهِ تَتَفَقَّدُ And purify your heart, cleansing it from every type of blemish and continuously examine it for any existing faults. The author says وَقَلْبَكَ طَهِّرْهُ وَمِنْ كُلِّ آفَةٍ Strive my beloved brothers and sisters strive to what في تطهير قلبك purify your heart and cleaning it cleaning it from every form of illnesses that can fall to it just like you strive to making sure that your clothes is clean that it's not dirty strive to making sure that you clean your heart because what's more befitting for you to clean? Your heart or your clothes? Your heart. And the heart is afflicted with so much illnesses. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he said in his book, Amrad al qulubi wa Shifa'uha, which is in Majmu' al-Fatawa, it's published separately and it's also even translated in English. The 10th volume, page 93. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he says, مرض القلب هو نوع فساد يحصل له يفسد به تصوره وإرادته. The illnesses of our heart, the heart, it's a type of corruption. It's a type of harm that occurs to the person. يفسد, what it does, it corrupts your perception and your will. The person can't perceive things correctly. 
and they, their will, their drive becomes also corrupt. فَتَصَوُّرُهُ بِالشُّبُهَاتِ الَّتِي تَعْرِضُ لَهُ حَتَّى لَا يَرَى الْحَقَّ أَوْ يَرَاهُ عَلَى خِلَافِ بَهُ عَلَيْهِ His perception with desires it occurs to him until he can't see the truth or he sees it in opposite what it is. وَإِرَادَتُهُ بِحَيْثُ يُبْغِضُ الْحَقَّ النَّافِعِ وَيُحِبُّ الْبَاطِلِ الضَّارِ And he said his drive also becomes corrupt by loving, sorry, by hating, having enmity towards the haqq that's beneficial for him and also loving the falsehood that is harmful for him. So purifying your heart and cleaning it, it, because it comes through tawheed, ikhlas, sidq, truthfulness, and it is to make sure that you work hard when it comes to matters which relate to a'mal al the actions of the heart. Those are the things that clean the heart and purify the heart. Ibn al-Qayyim said in his kitab, Al-Fawaid, Al-Qalbu yamridu. The heart becomes sick. Just like the body becomes sick. وَشِفَاءُهُ Its cure is فِي التَّوْبَةِ It coming by with repentance. And it is also, also to repel from it. Just like you repel, sorry, it repels the glass. Things fall on the glass, it goes down. Or the window. The window doesn't hold things. Things fall on it, it goes off. The heart of two types, Ibn al-Qayyim mentions in another place. This is a heart of two types. A heart which is like a mirror. Things fall on it and it, go, it deflects. It just goes. It, it doesn't take it in. And another heart is like a sponge. Everything that comes, it swallows it. It takes it in. And he said, this I took from my teacher, Ibn Taymiyyah. He said to me, Ibn al-Qayyim, because Ibn Taymiyyah was one who was known to fight and to look into the books of the innovators and refute them and debunk their misconceptions. He would scrutinize their works. And he kept saying to Ibn al-Qayyim, who was also taking that path, he said to him, he said to him, Ibn al-Qayyim, make your heart like the mirror. The mirror and the window, they don't hold on things. Things fall on and they, they, go, they, get, they get off it. Or it's easy to wipe it off. He said, don't let your heart be like a sponge where everything that you read, it goes into your heart straight away and you swallow it. So the heart, he said, it's like, like, like that. The repentance is what kills it. What cleans it is dhikr, he said. By remembering Allah, you're consistently cleaning it. It's beauty, it's taqwa, he said. The heart becomes hungry just like the body becomes hungry, he said. It becomes thirsty. كَمَا يَجُعُ الْبَدَنْ Just like the body becomes thirsty. And the thirst and the hunger is attained through what? It's you quench your thirst and you remove the hunger for the heart. The body, what is it? The body is food and drink, right? He said the heart is المعرفت والمحبت والتوكل والإنابة it's the actions of the heart that we always spoke, speak about al-khawf wal-raja wal-mahabbat wal-inabat wal-khashiyat wal-khawf all of those they are the things that they're the food that you need to eat are you with me? the heart is exactly just like the body the heart is exactly just like the body for example a person needs to eat vegetables صح? 
The body needs vegetables, right? The heart also needs things. Just eating food all day is not enough. It's not good for you. Are you with me? The same is when it comes to when it comes to things. You have to have khawf and you have to have raja and you have to have all of these. The heart needs it. So dealing with your heart in a particular different way to how you deal with your body is incorrect, he's trying to say. Then the author goes on saying, وَكُنْ أَبَدًا عَنْ عَيْبِهِ تَتَفَقَدُ He is very powerful now. He says, And always be, دائماً فَتِّشْ عَنْ عُيُوبِ نَفْسِكَ Consistent, look, look for your own mistakes. Where am I deficient? Look at it, look for it. And the illnesses of your heart, consistently look for it. What illnesses do you have in you that are present in you? So you can clean yourself from it. Ya ikhwa, if you don't recognize something, you won't be able to cure it. Recognition is the first step to rectification. You have to memorize this. Recognition is the first step to rectification. If a person is in denial, is in stubborn denial, and he doesn't agree with you, then no doubt he will not rectify his situation. Ibn al-Qayyim said, مَن لَمْ يُطَهِّرِ اللَّهُ قَلْبَهُ فَلَا بُدَّ أَنْ يَنَالَهُ الْخِزْيُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْعَذَابُ فِي الْأَخِرَةِ بِحَسَبِ نَجَاسَةِ قَلْبِهِ وَقُبْتِهِ Ibn al-Qayyim says, The person who Allah does not purify his heart, without a shadow of a doubt, it will occur to him in this world, khizi, disgrace. وَالْعَذَابُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ And punishment in hereafter. All of that in accordance to what? بِحَسَبِ نَجَاسَةِ قَلْبِهِ All of that he is gaining. The خِزْيُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْعَذَابُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ All of that is happening in accordance to what? His body? No. بِنَجَاسَةِ قَلْبِهِ وَخُبْتِهِ All in accordance to how dirty his heart was and how filthy it was and how uh, destroyed his heart was and we said many times and this is where he took it from this Ibn Al-Qayyim he says this in his kitab Ighatha Tullah Fan لم, uh, you know Ulaika those are people who Allah wanted to not purify their hearts in this world, they have khizyum fi dunya. In this world, they're going to live a very sad life, disgraceful life for life. Wal adabu fil akhira. And the day of judgment, adab awaits them. The adab is not the same for everybody. Somebody's heart is not as dirty as another person's heart. But he will gain a portion of the fire, a portion of the punishment. Look at if a person says, I am suffering, I am going through a lot of harms, I am. All of that is in accordance to the person's heart. So we ask the person, your heart, how clean is it? So we always need to come with these characteristics as the author says, وَكُنْ أَبَدًا عَنْ عَيْبِهِ تَتَفَقَّدُ That you are consistently looking for your own mistakes and you're checking up on yourself. I'm sure on this man, subhanAllah, this is... Are you there? Don't let... You looking for your mistakes make you reach as it again, giving up. But if you consistently look at your own mistakes, you just give up and say, you know what, I'm just going to let. Looking for your mistakes means it makes you work harder. And to perfect your situation. A lot of the times people understand this and it's incorrect. They understand that when they look at themselves and they see themselves deficient, they leave off the good that they were doing. For example, a person prays Qiyamul Layl and he says, Wallahi, sometimes uh, I might show off when I pray in my Qiyamul Layl. So he says, SubhanAllah, I'm just going to leave it. You're making it worse. Don't leave it. Leave off the showing off. Carry on this act of praying Qiyamul Layl is good. But just don't show off when you're doing it. I fast on Mondays and Thursdays. And I'm sometimes showing off. Don't leave the Mondays and the Thursdays behind. Just perfect your heart. Clean your heart. The action doesn't stop. 
ولذلك هذا السلف they used to say طلبنا العلم لغير الله we sought knowledge for other than Allah's sake فأبى أن يكون إلا لله but they were perfecting their knowledge they never stopped seeking knowledge they carried on seeking knowledge and they carried on learning but what they were doing was as they were learning they were also cleaning their hearts and purifying their hearts but it doesn't mean that you come with a radical uh, approach where you stop the righteous deed in totality. That's then shaitan's waswas. This is shaitan's playing with the person. Now.